We all know that wine grown in different areas can have a different taste, but did you know that the soil and the climate differences can have a big effect? My name is Wes Hagen. I'm the brand ambassador and the consulting winemaker for the uh, Miller Family Wine Company. And here we are in the beautiful Santa Maria Valley at Bien Nacido Vineyard, uh, one of the greatest vineyards in California, to talk a little bit about what is terroir. So terroir is a French term, almost quasi-religious, that describes how place impacts wine. Uh, and really what I like to say is that in the United States, maybe the term terroir is overused and under understood. So what I would love for you guys to understand is that terroir here really focuses on these old seabeds. These are, you know, 12 million year old Miocene seabeds that were forced up during a violent tectonic shift millions of years ago. So we're standing on an old seabed. Millions of years ago, we would have been underwater. And in 10 million years from now, we'll probably be, be underwater again because this entire peninsula is unstable and will probably fade away. This entire promontory rose out of the ocean and gave us a sort of a, a, a side look of all the geology that had been basically stacking up as dead things floated to the bottom of the ocean over millions of years. So on the very bottom, we can see calcium, we can see diatomaceous earth, we can see little veins of red that come from probably some uh, iron or ferrous clay. So as those soils weather, when the rain hits them, when the wind breaks them, they basically come down out of that mountain and they feed the soil in the valley in between. And that's called an alluvial process. And that is how soil is made. And that is how terroir is born. It will be helpful for you to understand in the world of terroir that we have sandy soils, we have clay-based soils, and some silt-based soils. Clay is what vines use to be very vigorous. So in vigorous vineyards, that's generally going to be a clay soil. Sandy soils are much uh, faster drained, so the water moves through them very quickly. The vines stay very small and compact, and the clusters stay small and compact. And then I think really when you look at clay loam and sandy loam soils, a mix between these old uh, geologically apparent materials of sand and clay mixed with a little bit of old broken down sort of biological material from old plants are really gives the best soils in the world the capacity to grow great wine. So soil matters, weather matters, wind matters, rain matters, all of these things are part of terroir, but a very important part of terroir that a lot of people don't talk about is human influence and the genius of human discernment. How human beings look at a vine, manipulate the vine, change the vine. Remember, vine's jobs are to grow up a tree in the middle of a forest. Well, we don't do that anymore. Now we use artificial trees called trellises that allow the vines to grow up and to not be shaded and to produce quite a bit of fruit and allow us to manipulate the canopy of the vine to show the best grapes and to give the grapes the best chance to make delicious wine. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say that terroir does not exist in a vacuum. It does not exist without human intervention and terroir without human intervention is just a chunk of dirt. Thank you.